thank you. The devil is a liar. I want to thank God for this opportune time that he has given us to be in his presence. We pray. Father God, we thank you for uh, this uh, special time that you've given us as your children to be in your presence. We pray that Father you may open our eyes to see your glory, open our hearts to receive of your grace and mercies. In our lips, sing of your grace. But Lord, you may continue to set our hearts on fire and fire for you. You may speak to us in the stillness of your voice. Lord, your glory may be made manifest in our lives. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I want to take this time to sincerely thank the worship team and the youth who are leading us in this service. And I also introduce myself to you. Uh, my name is Bishop Samuel Dudu, uh, the Bishop of the Diocese of North Bale. I'm the sitting Bishop of North Bale, not the retired uh, Bishop. Uh, so I want also to welcome you all, brothers and sisters, to this uh, online church of Uganda lunch, uh, uh, our prayers, and also thank the organizers of these uh, prayers. A special uh, thanks uh, goes to the DVC Academics, Uganda Christian University, uh, Dr. Itaimba Akitaimba uh, for his loving Christian friendship. Uh, friends, in the work of faith, we need to work together with friends. So thanks uh, so much, Dr. Taimba, for your true gesture of friendship. Also, my thanks uh, goes to our team leader, uh, His Grace, uh, the most uh, reverend, uh, Dr. Stephen Samuel Azimba, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, for his faithful uh, service. Through him, God is speaking to me the most. Uh, to this and many others, I'm really very, very grateful. Friends, our sharing for today is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 8, uh, reading from verses uh, 43 to 48. And our sharing is under the theme, Church of Faith. And I want to thank the organizers of this online Church of Uganda and our prayers are for choosing such an appropriate uh, uh, theme for the, for the season. Uh, friends, a touch of faith by a woman who had suffered from a constant flow of blood. So in this portion of scripture, we are going to talk about a touch of faith by a woman who had suffered much from a constant flow of blood for 12 years, leading her into a very uh, miserable uh, situation. It was not just an ordinary touch, but a touch of faith, like the one of, uh, of, 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 of the people who threw a dead body in Elisha's tomb and touched his, his bones, and the dead body came to life. So, friends, we want to share uh, about the touch of, of faith as Christians. Uh, friends, from this portion of scripture that was read to us by our sister, we learn that the world in which we live is full of pain, it is full of troubles. It is full of sufferings, and many souls are bleeding with pain. Today we are seeing many families bleeding with the pain of domestic violence. We are seeing our young girls bleeding with the pain of teenager pregnancies. Many people are bleeding because we are living in a world of heart, a world that is hurting. This means 
this woman who had suffered a constant flow of blood for 12 years knew the terrible situation he was in. He knew the pain as she had undergone. He knew the pain and the shame and the rejection he had suffered from many because the disease was not only weakening and wasting, but also rendered her ceremonially and green. Therefore, she was treated as a social outcast. She spent all that she had, but nothing better for herself. Medical skills proved nothing. So when we look at verse 44 of chapter 8 of the gospel, according to St. Luke, I tell us that she came up behind him and touched the egg of his clock and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they had, when they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. In this portion of scripture, we see the, the crowd, the great multitude, trying to turn Jesus, Jesus' question as if he had made a silly question. The crowd was trying to make fool of Jesus as if what he has asked carries no sense, carries no meaning. So this woman called Jesus with a deep sense of her need, stretched her hand in faith and touched Jesus. Indeed, it was a touch of faith. Friends, don't let any situation you are in stop you from approaching Jesus or hinder your faith in Christ Jesus. This woman was hidden from men, but known by Jesus. You know, when she came in faith and touched the hem of Jesus' garment and she was healed, a crowd around tried to hide her from Jesus. They tried to make fool of Jesus' question. So men tried to, to hide her, but she was known by Jesus. But she was known by Jesus. This woman who had suffered from a constant flow of blood for 12 years was healed by Jesus. She was hidden by men, but healed by Jesus. She was hidden by men, but saved by Jesus. She was hidden by men, but delivered by Jesus. She was saved, I mean, hidden by men, but comforted by Jesus. She was hidden by men, but honored by Jesus because of her faith. And that's why Jesus said to her, Go in peace. Your faith has healed you. Indeed, it was a touch of faith. Friends, in this portion of scripture, we learn that faith stretches out an open hand, but it receives all. Younger people, don't let your situation make you lose hope and faith in Christ Jesus. Even the closure of schools due to COVID-19 pandemic should not make you lose your faith. The only thing that is required of you is straight your heart in faith and touch the hymn of Christ's garment. And touch Christ's word. The only thing that is needed of you is to stretch your hand in faith and touch Christ's word. And touch Christ's love. And touch Christ's promise. And you receive your deliverance. Just as this woman who had suffered a constant flow of blood for 12 years received her deliverance from the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus told her, your faith has made you well. When you read uh, verse uh, 48 of this chapter, Jesus tells us, this woman, then Jesus said to her daughter, 
your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Friends, I want to tell you that there is power in everything that belongs to Jesus. There is power in everything that belongs to Jesus. The hymn of the garment that this suffering woman touched was Jesus. It was Christ's garment. And because it was Christ's garment, there was power in the garment. So everything that belongs to Christ Jesus has power. The garment was the Lord's. The word is the Lord's. The love we experience is the Lord's. The promise is the Lord's. Friends, the church of Uganda is Christ's. And therefore, it has the power. It has the power of the Lord. Because everything that belongs to Jesus has power. You are also Christ's. And that's why God has blessed his power in you. That's why his word tells us that he who is in us is more stronger than the one who is in the world. So friends, I want you to learn from this portion of scripture that everything that belongs to Jesus has power. You are also Christ's disciple. You are his ambassador. You have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. The garment that this lady touched belonged to Jesus. And therefore, he had power. You also belong to Christ Jesus. You need to see yourself as one who has been called a him to express his kingdom power here on earth. So friends, in this portion of scripture, I want to challenge us to know the power of faith. Because this woman stretched out an empty hand and received the power. She received total deliverance from Christ Jesus. Because she, she stretched out a hand of faith. And she received all because she had great faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, without faith, the word of God tells us there's no way we can please God. Without faith, we cannot please God. We need to move in faith because by faith, we stretch out the hand. By faith, we cry unto the Lord. By faith, we live. By faith, we have peace with God. By faith, we stand. By faith, we overcome the challenges that come our way. By faith, we are delivered. By faith, we are healed. Friends, Satan tries to cripple the hand of faith and seals up the lip of confession. When Jesus asked the multitude, the people who had gathered around, who had touched him, they all turned Jesus' expression into something which was meaningless. But Jesus insisted because he knew the power had gone out of him and it had infected the healing. And so here we see this woman coming to Jesus in faith. Today, there are many songs that are lost even within our congregations that follow Jesus out of curiosity. They follow Jesus without a real sense for need of the salvation of their souls. But friends, there's a need for a willingness to acknowledge Jesus as your Savior. Jesus wants to have a conversation with you and I. And that's why he wanted this woman publicly come up and tell him that I am the one who has touched you. And Jesus honors her faith and tells her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Those who touch Jesus in faith receive their healing. To walk in peace with God. When you read verse 48 of this chapter, Many people have spent many 
sorrowful years in search of peace and healing, moving from one church to another, but to no avail due to lack of faith. So friends, today I want to challenge us to make a church of faith, just as this lady did. To walk in faith with Christ Jesus and to grow in faith, to serve in faith with Christ Jesus. If you are to receive your deliverance and healing, if you are to win great victories and accomplish great tasks that the Lord has put before you, this woman came up in faith and touched Jesus' garment and she was healed. Today, we are seeing many people bleeding with the pain of rejection. But here, Jesus telling us that there is hope for the hopeless. Many people are bleeding with the pain of suffering because we are living in a suffering world. But here we see Jesus ex uh, extending his word of comfort to this woman. Daughter, your faith has made you well. This lady was treated as a social outcast, but Jesus saw her as her as his daughter. The world may look at you as a social outcast. The world may look at you as somebody who has most hope, but God sees you as his son, as his daughter, as his child. And he tells you, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. In faith, we walk in peace with God. Just like this lady did, and stretched his hand of faith and touched the hem of Jesus' garment and was healed. Today, you can also touch the love of Christ Jesus, and you will be delivered from the bondage of sin, from your bondage of slavery, because his word liberates his word, redeems, and he has a word of comfort, just as he did to this lady when he spoke to him, daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace. Today you can also walk in peace with Jesus. When you decide to stretch out your hand of faith and touch his garment, and touch his word, and touch his promise, you will walk in peace. You will walk in peace with the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I urge you, brother and sister, hearing me share from the wealth of God's word that you can also make a touch of faith and receive your deliverance. The Lord be with you. Amen. Father God, we want to thank you uh, once again for this opportunity that you've given to us. Share from the wealth of your word. Lord, I pray that you may cause us to take a step of faith, just as this woman did. Stretched her hand and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and she was delivered. Lord, we pray that you may cause us also to take the same a step, that we may walk in peace, walk as your children, as your sons and daughters, because you have a word of comfort for each one of us. I want to thank you for the worship team, the youth, and all the organizers of this online church of Uganda like our prayers. That Lord, you continue using them for your own glory. Grant us the gift of your spirit to continue guiding us in the way of truth and service. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>